with the kind of videos I've made in the past about traits regarding various psychological conditions, people tend to take those traits as being, if you have them, you have the condition. Now, there's a problem with that. The traits generalised are not something which equals the disorder. You could have a variety of traits which, in a pronounced way, would equate to a specific disorder, potentially at least. You know, if it's fully in context, if these things are in fact uh, key characteristics, they're consistent, then yes, you could have a particular disorder, or a person you know could have a disorder, or a person you dislike in politics. Donald Trump, for example, could have said disorder. Okay. However, if you're simply looking for any any aspect which fits a particular characteristic, then of course it's not going to be the same thing. It's about consistency. It's about these things being overt, not simply in certain cases. This is the problem with people who do amateur psychoanalysis, by the way. Um, there isn't really such thing as amateur psychoanalysis, it's either psychoanalysis or not psychoanalysis, but in any case there are mistakes which can be made, and with people who are completely um, ill-informed and jump to conclusions, a bit of bad pattern seeking, uh, political biases. It's understandable that they would come to some false conclusions, some things which are in fact uh, factually incorrect. And yeah, even when looking at themselves, I must have this condition or that condition. And uh, equally, people can do the opposite. They can say, I definitely don't have a condi uh, condition that relates to this. I definitely don't have this. I definitely don't have that. And they do the opposite role instead of um, inflating ideas to make things fit, they deflate them and say, oh, I'm not so bad, maybe I have a few traits. So there is a problem with people, well, jumping to conclusions or manipulating results with intention or not, based on what they think they know or what they would prefer to believe. And I think that's the very real problem with a great many of these lists. You know, I've done a few lists um, on various psychological conditions in the past. And if you take it as being you know, a easy to express idea, easy to analyze process, then of course you can find huge numbers of people with, say, a borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder, or perhaps um, they've got an antisocial personality disorder, which I believe has been renamed again. Um, it used to be sociopath. They keep on changing the names over the course of time with um, most of these conditions or disorders as, uh, you know, the science develops as it moves forward. And people will go, yes, this person has this, or this person has that. When they look at themselves, if they are a confident person, they may well do the opposite and say, I definitely don't have this, I don't have that. I can't be this, I cannot be that. They're approaching things in the wrong way and expressing things in a way in which they would prefer on some level, whether it is a conscious choice to say, I definitely have or definitely do not have, or a person I know has or does not have, or a celebrity or politician has this or does not have that based on my biases or whether it's simply a question of some kind of underlying uh, belief or idea or something more deeply ingrained in their psychological makeup, which causes them to accept or reject certain ideas. In that respect, I think there's an interesting area of discussion as well, because you're not simply dealing with, oh, well, there's all these traits and let's, you know, see where they fit. And, uh, you know, this is quite straightforward and fun and anyone can do it. No, it's more interesting to imagine the mentality of the way in which people can select out certain traits, make certain things fit, certain things seem to be logical, even if they're, well, effectively applying them in an illog illogical fashion. So in other words, a person will take these ideas and due to uh, the state of mind they have, how sceptical they actually are, how critical of their own thoughts they might be, overly critical perhaps, a lot of self-doubt, that could affect things as well. Uh, they could be a person with an inflated personality or sense of ego and that could e uh, equally cause problems. Things that throw off their logic, things that make them less reasonable and, you know, altogether this can affect how people compute what is or what is not a particular condition. And even then, they're amateurs. They're amateurs without enough information and not necessarily understanding things perfectly in context with themselves. Perhaps they can say, well, maybe I do have this. Maybe I do have that. Maybe I should consider, you know, looking into this more, which is what you should do. You should just simply say, you know, I have said condition, therefore I'm going to ask people to treat me, you know, in a special way. No, you should say, um, oh, I may well have an issue or a problem 
what are the approaches to this? Can I be, uh, you know, uh, tested? Can I go to a therapist to get help? You know, whatever the case may be, it's not simply a question of throwing around labels, in other words, which is what people tend to do. People will find a label and cling to it. And that's true of a great many aspects of, you know, society and culture. And it's no different when it comes down to things, you know, when it comes down to your psychological makeup. When people think they can latch onto a label and say, oh, I've got this condition, or, oh, that person, well, they've definitely got that condition. Yeah, they will. They will cling to these terms, these ideas, because they seem to make sense. And what people tend to do, it's a, another aspect of, uh, well, the human condition, as it were, is that we try and make sense, even if the sense we make isn't actually the truth, even if it isn't actually the facts as they are. We are making things fit. We are creatures with pattern seeking. It's been a, a survival trait, part of our evolution. It allowed us to uh, survive, you know, rustle in the bushes. This is a thing that uh, Michael Shermer has said um, many times, you know, rustle, rustle in the bushes and you run, you know, your, uh, your pre-human ancestors, they ran and those which waited, well, they didn't run. Now, the problem is, if you run and there's nothing there, no problem. If you run and there is something there, you're more likely to survive. If you don't run and there's nothing there, no problem. If you don't run and there is something there, say some kind of prehistoric uh, tiger or lion-like creature, then you're lunch. And that's the very real problem. And that evolutionary um, pattern seeking, that pattern seeking that has allowed us to survive, continues, it lingers, and we make sense of things even if there isn't sense to be made. We make conspiracy theories if there's no sound theory for us to actually latch onto. We make things work by having, I don't know, persuasive arguments thrown in our direction from others, and we'll throw out our own, you know, thoughts and ideas. And if it seems to make sense, oh yes, I've got a gut feeling about that, that seems to be right to me, even if it is not as it seems, even if it's the oversimplified, uh, idea. It's not actually true. It's something which is expressed as some kind of greater understanding or some kind of acceptable view. But in actuality, it leaves out a lot of uh, variables and is in fact uh, non-valid when you include those things which you uh, haven't accounted for. So there is that problem and that's what people tend to do when using these traits when it comes down to psychological conditions. 